Item number SCP-2059 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-2059 is to be contained within a modified containment area designed for Class IV hostile amorphous entities. The unit must be comprised of a shaft 40 meters deep and 15 meters in diameter composed of high-gloss steel plating. This plating is to be replaced as need be to maintain a fine polish throughout. The opening of this shaft is to be covered with a shockproof plexiglass plate that can be removed remotely. Additionally, the containment unit is to be equipped with necessary video and audio surveillance equipment, as well as a speaker system in order to facilitate communication with SCP-2059-1. SCP-2059 is an autonomous and sentient mass of flesh, bones, and organs. The entire mass is seemingly dominated by a large yellow sensory organ that does not correspond to that of any known species. The organ resembles the eye in composition, but further study has shown that it is capable of detecting infrared radiation and heat signatures. SCP-2059 appears capable of rearranging itself at will, but normally it follows the usual composition. The exterior is smooth flesh covering a grid of bones that protect vital organs and brain tissue in the center of the mass. SCP-2059 does not require extraneous sustenance. Any living creature touching SCP-2059 will be absorbed into its mass, but keratinous material skin, hair, and nails is discarded. The time of writing SCP-2059 consists of one blue whale, one giant squid of unknown species, two bottlenose dolphins, several specimens of various livestock, approximately 30 human beings, one dead human being in advanced stages of decomposition, several specimens of various household pets, approximately 300 rodents, an undetermined amount of insects. SCP-2059 has the tendency of attempting to fill a space completely if it is confined in one. This is assumed to be to help it retain cohesiveness. SCP-2059 exhibits highly aggressive behavior towards all human and animal life. It will attempt to either kill or assimilate any organisms on site. While in a passive state, SCP-2059 is usually gathered on the bottom of its containment, with most of its mass pressed against one of the corners. Despite SCP-2059 having multiple sets of vital organs, it does not appear to be using most of them. PET tracer scans have shown that almost 85% of all organs within SCP-2059 are inactive and unused. See Interview Log 2059-02 for more information. Addendum 2059-01 On A verbal connection was made with an individual within SCP-2059. This individual is hereby referred to as SCP-2059-1. The following is an audio transcript of the event. Interviewed SCP-2059-1 Interviewer Dr. N Forward Transcript of Initial Contact Dr. N was assigned to supervise SCP-2059. SCP-2059-1 speech has been translated from Hindi. Dr. N is in the observation room, filing paperwork. Surveillance cameras show a face emerging from SCP-2059, gasping for air. Ah, finally, he let me on the surface. Dr. N is visibly startled. What? Hello, is… is anybody out there? He has seen you in your white robes. The sound of a coffee mug being shattered is heard and Dr. opens communications to their supervisor. Stuttering. Sir? Sir? SCP-2059 is speaking. I can't figure out what it is saying. Where is this? He feels cold. Site Director. Please remain calm. We will send someone there. Where is the sun? End log. Closing statement. Following initial contact, Dr was reassigned to supervising another SCP object. Dr. J has been assigned to this object due to their fluency in Hindi. Addendum 2059-02 SCP-2059-1 was questioned about its identity and for further details about SCP-2059. It was soon established that SCP-2051 was a Buddhist monk who was reported missing in India in 18 the following is an audio transcript of a conversation with SCP-2059-1. Interviewed SCP-2059-1 Interviewer Dr. J Forward, this event occurred shortly after initial contact with SCP-2059-1. During the time in between logs, SCP-2059 has rearranged multiple times. Begin log. SCP-2059-1's location has changed during the time Dr was being transported to the scene. 
The audio is muffled due to SCP-2059-1 partly facing the wall. Why is there so little light? He cannot see anything. Doctor enters the observation room and opens communication into containment. Hello SCP-2059, this is Doctor of the Foundation. A man or a woman of medicine? I hear you, sister. Where are you? I am in an observation booth above you. You shouldn't be able to see me. Could you answer some questions? SCP-2059-1 is silent for a duration of three minutes until SCP-2059 rearranges. SCP-2059-1's face is now on the surface, with all of its features present. I ask him to move me upwards. Ask who? The child, of course. Who else could I ask? Child? What do you mean? Well, not exactly a child. He is… the son of… Glurbed? Garblord? But I feel that he is afraid, like a child who is cornered. How are you able to tell that? We are connected as one, but sadly our thoughts do not quite translate to one another. His thoughts are great, loud, and terrifying, while mine are much, much smaller and easily drowned. Data redacted for brevity. Our scans show that SCP-2059, the thing you are in, does not use more of itself. Why is that? He simply doesn't know what to do with them. Poor child, unsure what all these bags and tracks do or where they go. He has barely even understood how a heart works, less the liver. To you it might seem obvious, but he… he comes from a different place, with different rules. Where has he come from? Third cycle of… unintelligible, Farshorn? Farhorn? I think. It really isn't that easy translating it. How are you sane? All the other individuals aren't. I am a learned one of Buddha. It is my duty to show him the error of his ways. He may be but an infant, curious to learn, but he still knows so little. He needs guidance, and I am… SCP-2059 rearranges, and SCP-2059-1 withdraws underneath the surface. End log. Closing statement. SCP-2059 returned to an idle state. Further occasions of SCP-2059-1 appearing are yet to be recorded.